So hi guys, my name is Manse Anand and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. So guys, as most of you would be knowing that in this series, we try to discuss some concepts with the help of a few questions that can help you in your preparation for competitive exams, right? So are you ready to, are you ready for the session? Before moving to question number one, I would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel if you are a new entrant here then don't forget to press this subscribe button and after that don't forget to press this bell icon it can help you to stay in touch with us right after that don't forget to join our telegram group on this group you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to resolve them as soon as possible so moving ahead to question number one for today and here is your question number one okay Let's see what this question talks about. This question says that there is a bank which is facing some problems which are given to you in the five options below. Out of the following situations, which one do you think is the situation most fit for conducting a TEV study? So here five situations are given to you, five problems that a particular bank is facing and you have to tell that in which of the situation or to resort which type of pro which problem that bank should go for conducting a TEV study. So for attempting this question first of all you should know that what is TEV study and how is it significant significant to a bank right. So should we move ahead to the solution for this question and the solution is option C. So here you can see Option C means the bank is going to change the terms and conditions of loans that have been extended to borrowers because of their inability to pay. So guys, this situation relates to a current scenario that is going on in Indian economy. So as you all must be knowing or you should know that the central bank, it came up with a one-time restructuring scheme in August to help those borrowers who are unable to pay or who are in financial distress due to the outbreak of pandemic, right? So, Central Bank RBI, it allowed the banks, the lenders to restructure their loans. So, you can see here, changing the terms and conditions of a loan, it means restructuring. So restructuring of loans, whenever a bank is restructuring loans, at that time the bank can, <coughs> the bank can conduct a TEV study. So let's see how many of you know that what is the full form of TEV here. And for those of you who don't know, that is completely fine because we are going to learn about it. Here you can see the solution. Okay, a TEV study is a techno economic viability study so as you can as you can get from its name it says techno economic viability basically this tev study it is used whenever a bank comes up with a new project and it wants to analyze that whether that project is going to be beneficial for it in the future or not. So basically judging the viability of a project, how good it is for the bank to jump in a project, right? You can see here, it is a useful tool for lenders as well, can be used to ascertain how a loan will perform after a debt recast. So once a bank has changed the terms and conditions of a debt of a borrower that means it has restructured or recasted the loan in in that scenario whether it is going to be profitable for the bank to restructure or not that can be analyzed with the help of a techno economic viability study right so it is basically a tool a risk mitigation technique so why a risk mitigation technique because it takes into account different types of risk it tries to analyze that how technological risk, market risk, regulatory risk and financial risk. These four aspects are going to affect the operation of the new project by the bank. Here what is the new project? Restructuring the debts of old borrowers, right? So these are the four parameters a TEV study works on. So technological risks that whether let's say if there is a firm to, uh, if there is a firm who has borrowed from the bank and that firm works in an IT industry. So if there is 
a change going to be in the technological sector whether it is going to affect the paying capacity of that firm or not so in that way the tv study takes into account different types of aspects such as regu regulatory risk if there is a rule or law that is going to be changed and that can affect the paying capacity of its borrower whose loan has been restructured right so in that way it analyzes it the project on different different parameters as you can see here so this is related to the current scenario because banks now who are going to restructure they are very stressed borrowers they have started to hire or tap consultants to conduct these type of studies <coughs> right so i think it's a very easy question and a very easy concept to understand moving ahead to question number 2 Here is your question number two for today, which says Dash describes the movement of stocks in a volatile market when a stock price will suddenly switch directions. So, do you see that the question is asking that the price of a stock or any commodity or anything switches the direction or changes the direction in a very unpredictable way? You have to tell the correct option. What is this situation called? Let's see what the correct option is. and the correct option for this question is a a means whipsaw so a is the correct answer whipsaw is known as a change a sudden change in the price of a commodity so let's say if there is a stock of a company a and that stock was going upwards it suddenly starts to move downwards right or it can be the opposite of it let us study about whipsaw in detail okay here you can see so there is no set rule as to how to manage whipsaw movements because they are so unpredictable in nature right and it happens in a volatile market it is an unexpected movement and it is accompanied with trading losses losses obviously whenever traders enter into a deal they make some expectations or they have some assumptions they have some expectations about the market that whether the price <coughs> i'm sorry whether the price is going to rise or fall right and whenever that expectation goes wrong the expectation went wrong the expectation they go wrong and the trader result in losses there are two types of whipsaw patterns first is the one where an upward movement of share price suddenly turns into a drastic downward movement and the next is its opposite <coughs> where a downward movement or the share of the the price of the share is dropping and it suddenly surges upward right so here you can see two shapes so now why are we talking about whipsaw here because this term has recently been used by monetary policy committee i hope many of you have heard about it the, when chetan ghate member of mpc he mentioned a term called whipsaw inflation <coughs> so he he used this term whipsaw with context to inflation so can you relate the meaning that means that inflation suddenly changing its direction so this is this has been used in relation to the current scenario where you can see that there is no demand or the demand generation is very slow or government is trying to provide stimulus to generate the demand so that leads us to thinking that okay if there is no or less demand in the economy then inflation must be low or the prices of goods and services must be low but there are aspects there are some news articles coming which are showing us that how inflation is also rising in india so this leads to a situation called stagflation where there is no demand or the growth is very slow but there is inflation also <coughs> right so this leads us to a situation called stagflation so chetan ghate re, uh, recently mentioned whipsaw inflation and he he con he 
he coined this term in relation to inflation that how inflation changes its direction or how it is going against the expectations what market is expecting and what it is actually so in a recent uh, session we discussed the reasons behind this inflation so we learned about a term called imported inflation so all those of you who are not aware of it you can check that session out that talks about the different reasons that why inflation is rising in india okay so are you ready for the next question the next question <coughs> for today is it says which app has been recently launched by prime minister which will help farmers get information about livestock let's see who gives the correct answer a very simple question <coughs> moving ahead to the solution of this question okay the solution is b that is the application's name is e gopala app so this launch has recently been launched by prime minister modi to help farmers get information about how to manage their cattle how to breed them or what nutritious uh, food to feed them right so different information about livestock so he also launched some more schemes you can see here so prime minister launched pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana so this scheme was this scheme was introduced by finance minister when she came up with the 20 <coughs> so this scheme was launched this scheme was announced by finance minister for finance minister in may when she came up with the relief package right so it was a flagship program as you can uh, judge from its name it says matsya sampada yojana so that means it somehow relates to fisheries in india right so sustainable development of fisheries sector in country apart from that pm launched e gopala app we just discuss about it so it's a marketplace and an information portal for direct use of farmers about comprehensive breeding improvement about comprehensive breeding improvement right so this these were launched by him and apart from that some other projects were launched by him in bihar so as you can see here some details about matsya sampada yojana so why is this e gopala portal important because currently there is no such comprehensive portal which provides such kind of information to farmers right and if you remember the relief package which was announced by finance minister it also talked about that how we need to work on improving our our livestock our cattle and the dairy based products right <clears throat> so dairy before dairy for improvement of dairy based products it is very important to look after the livestock right so moving ahead to the fourth question for today okay here is the fourth question which says according to a latest announcement what interest rate will be paid by epfo to its sub subscribers so a very simple question epfo has recently been in news so why has epfo been in news because of its negative incomes so epfo has put epfo put some money into some types uh, some types of investment but it didn't generate any kind of positive return the return it generated was negative that is why there were apprehensions about that what interest rate is epfo going to pay to its subscribers that has been recently announced let's see who gives the correct answer for this question okay the correct answer for this question is option e that is that is 8.5% this is the interest rate that has been announced by epfo moving ahead here you can see provident fund body that is epfo says 8.5% rate is going to be provided and after that 8.15% from its debt investments and 0.35% from its equity investments so guys in a recent session we studied that epfo invests its 85% of investments in debt instruments 
and the rest 15% in equity, right? So the point is, it is saying that from the debt investment, it is going to provide 8.15% rate and for from equity going to provide 0.35%, right? But, but the market is very very apprehensive or very doubtful about it because of the negative income that EPFO has experienced that okay it has made an announcement but where from where does it from where is it going to get the money to pay the, this kind of interest rate to its subscribers so markets are saying that the announcement is very um, is very high as compared to what was expected after this negative interest negative uh, returns news so epfo has announced a very handsome interest rate as compared to what was expected but there are also doubts that from where is it going to pay it when it does not have the income right so epfo is very important because the retirement bit because it it has the it encompasses the retirement savings of usually low wage workers right and also there were news that when the pandemic approached, many people withdrew from their EPFO accounts because they were facing financial distress, right? So we'll have to wait and watch that what is going to happen. Also, there was one more thing that EPF, so earlier there were announcements that EPFO is going to pay this, this interest to its subscribers in two installments. But now recently, the new announcements are coming which is which are saying that it will pay in one installment at least try to pay in one installment rather than two right okay moving ahead <clears throat> moving ahead to last question for today so guys here is your last question for today which says what reason is being cited by central government for making state governments borrow the money to meet gst shortfall rather than borrowing on its own. So why the central government wants that let the state governments borrow and we'll fund them later rather than borrowing themselves. So what reason out of the five you think can be a possible reason for it? So moving ahead to correct option for this question and the correct option is A. So if central government will borrow itself, then it might lead to pushing up of yields. So the point is, if central government is going to borrow by its own, it will have to release the, it, it will have to issue bonds in return for, uh, from, for borrowing from markets, right? And when it will issue bonds and borrow money from market, that is going to push up the yields at as it is going to, as this will increase the demand for money in the market and see governments they do not borrow a small amount they usually borrow a very hefty amount right so that is why that is going to lead to increase in demand for money which will lead to pushing up of interest rate so guys see if you take money as a commodity and the interest rate for borrowing if you go to a bank to take a loan let's say you need to buy a house and you want loan you are basically buying money for, for from the bank and what you are paying to bank as interest is the cost of borrowing right so interest is the cost of borrowing So when the demand for this money increases, when the government borrows, it pushes up the interest rate, right? And government really does not want that. It wants to keep the interest rates low so that it is easier to borrow in the economy and that stimulates growth in the economy, right? So this is a major concern of the government. Uh, that is why it wants states to borrow. So this is related to the GST shortfall issue which has been in news for quite some time now. So if you remember we discussed that how the central government it provide two option to states earlier which were which was which were rejected by the states and after that it came up with a new option where the central government said that okay we are going to compensate the states the entire amount right and now if 
the if the states accept this new proposal it could avoid the ugly face off between the center and states which have which has been going on now center wants what the center union government wants that let states accept this new proposal and they should borrow instead of the union government see you can see here center has asked rbi to open a special window where states can access loan so they want states to borrow and they are going to fund these loans and how they are going to do so you can see here further these borrowings will be linked to collections under cess so whatever the union government is going to collect by this cess it is going it it will go into funding the cost of borrowing for the states and that is why it won't pressure the budget of the state so do you see how central government is funding the loan so but if the central government is borrowing then it might lead to increase in borrowing cost for everyone creating troubles for the economy and there is also one more reason that states have borrowed only 1.2% of the state GD, the, of the gross state domestic product whereas 5% is allowed to them so states are allowed to borrow 5% of state governments are allowed to borrow 5% of gross state domestic product earlier this used to be 3% it was increased to 5% in may so they have still they have left 3.8% that they can borrow right that is why the these are the reasons why central want, central government wants states to borrow right so guys these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video if you did then don't forget to give up a thumbs up then don't forget to give us a thumbs up and i'll be back tomorrow with some new set of questions that can help you to prepare right so till then take care of your studies and thank you for being here